HarperCollins and Harper Audio present Warriors Super Edition Yellow Fang's Secret by Aaron Hunter Performed by McLeod Andrews Prologue Starlight shone down into a large cavern through a ragged hole in the roof. The faint silver sheen was just enough to show a tall rock jutting from the floor in the center of the cave, flanked by soaring rock walls, and at one side, the dark, gaping hole of a tunnel entrance. The shadows in the mouth of the tunnel thickened, and six cats emerged into the cavern. Their leader, a speckled gray tom with clumped, untidy fur, padded up to the rock and turned to face the others. Sage Whisker, Hawk Heart, Milk Fur, he began, nodding to each cat as he named them. We, the medicine cats of the four clans, are here to carry out one of our most important ceremonies, the creation of a new medicine cat apprentice. Two more cats lingered by the tunnel entrance, their eyes huge in the half-light. One of them shuffled his paws as if they had frozen to the cold stone. For Star Clan's sake, Goose Feather, get on with it, Hawkheart muttered with an impatient twitch of his tail. Goose Feather glared at him, then turned to the two young cats by the tunnel. Featherpaw, are you ready? he asked. The bigger of the two, a silver pelted Tom, gave a nervous nod. I guess so, he mewed. Then come here and stand before the Moonstone, Goose Feather directed. Soon it will be time to share tongues with Star Clan. Featherpaw hesitated. But I. I don't know what to say when I meet our ancestors. You'll know, the other young cat told him. Her white pelt glimmered as she touched his shoulder with her muzzle. It'll be awesome, you'll see. Just as it was when I became Milk for his apprentice. Thanks, Bramblepaw, Featherpaw murmured. He padded up to Goose Feather, while Sage Whisker, Milk Fur, and Hawk Heart sat a couple of tail lengths away. Bramblepaw took her place at her mentor's side. Suddenly, the moon appeared through the hole in the roof, shedding a dazzling white light into the cave. Featherpaw halted and blinked in astonishment as the moonstone woke into glittering life, blazing with silver. Goose Feather stepped forward to stand over him. Featherpaw, he meowed. Is it your wish to share the deepest knowledge of Star Clan as a Thunder Clan medicine cat? Featherpaw nodded. Yes, he replied, his voice coming out as a breathless croak. He cleared his throat and tried again. It is. Then follow me. Goosefeather turned, beckoning with his tail, and took the few paces that brought him close to the moonstone. His pale blue eyes shone like twin moons as he spoke. Warriors of Star Clan, I present to you this apprentice. He has chosen the path of a medicine cat. Grant him your wisdom and insight so that he may understand your ways and heal his clan in accordance with your will. Flicking his tail at Featherpaw, he whispered, Lie down here and press your nose against the stone. Quickly, Featherpaw obeyed, settling himself close to the stone and reaching out to touch its glimmering surface with his nose. The other medicine cats moved up beside him, taking similar positions all around the stone. In the silence and the brilliant light, the new medicine cat apprentice closed his eyes. Featherpaw's eyes blinked open, and he sprang to his paws. He was standing chest deep in lush grass in a clearing of a sunlit forest. Above his head, the trees rustled in the warm breeze. The air was laden with the scent of prey and damp fern. Hi, Featherpaw. The young Tom spun around. Approaching him through the grass was a tabby and white she-cat with blue eyes. She gave him a friendly flick with her tail as she drew closer. Featherpaw stared at her. M Malofer? He gasped. I've missed you so much. I may be a warrior of Star Clan now, but I am always with you, my dear, Malofur purred. It's good to see you here, Featherpaw. I hope it's the first time of many. I hope so too, Featherpaw responded. Malofur kept walking, brushing through the grass until she joined a ginger tom at the edge of the trees. Together, the two Star Clan cats vanished into the undergrowth. Close to the spot where they had disappeared, 
Another Star Clan warrior crouched beside a small pool, lapping at the water. Heartbeats later, a squirrel dashed across the clearing and swarmed up the trunk of an oak tree, with two more of Featherpaw's starry ancestors hard on its tail. Featherpaw heard his name being called again. Hey, Featherpaw, over here. Featherpaw glanced around the clearing. His gaze fell on a black tom, almost hidden in the shadows under a holly bush. He was small and skinny, his muzzle gray with age. The dark-furred cat beckoned with his tail. Over here, he repeated, his voice low and urgent. Are your paws stuck to the ground? Featherpaw shouldered his way through the long grasses until he stood in front of the tom. Who are you? What do you want? My name is Molepelt, the cat replied. I have a message for you. Featherpaw's eyes stretched wide. A message from Star Clan, my first time here? He breathed. Wow, that's so great! Molepelt let out an irritable grunt. You might not think so when you've heard what it is. Go on. Molepelt fixed him with an icy green gaze. A dark force is on its way, he rasped with the power to pierce deep into the heart of Thunder Clan, and it will be brought by a Shadow Clan medicine cat. What? Featherpaw's voice rose to a high pitched squeak. That can't be right. Medicine cats have no enemies, and they don't cause trouble for other clans. Molepelt ignored his protest. A long time ago, I was the Shadow Clan medicine cat, he went on. My clan mates and I did a great wrong to another clan, a clan that belonged in the forest as much as any of us, but was driven out through our selfishness and hard-heartedness. I knew then that what we did was wrong, and I have waited, my heart filled with dread, for the clans to be punished. Punished? How? Featherpaw asked hoarsely. The time has come. Molepelt's green eyes were wide, and he seemed to be gazing into the far distance. A poison will spring from the heart of Shadow Clan and spread to all the other clans. His voice became a soft, eerie wailing. A storm of blood and fire will sweep the forest. Featherpaw gazed at the old cat in horror. Before he could speak, a powerful black and white tom pushed his way through a clump of ferns and padded up to the holly bush. Molepelt, what are you doing? he demanded. Why are you spilling all this to a ThunderClan apprentice? You don't know that this is the time, Molepelt snorted. You were once my apprentice, Hollowbelly, and don't you forget it. I know I'm right. Hollowbelly glanced at Featherpaw, then back at Molepelt. Things are different now he meowed. What do you mean? What's going to happen? Featherpaw asked, his voice shaking. Hollowbelly ignored him. There's no reason to punish Shadow Clan, he continued. What happened was too long ago. The medicine cat code will keep the clan safe. You're a fool, Hollowbelly, Molepelt growled. The medicine cat code can do nothing to save the clans. You don't know that for sure. When Molepelt did not respond, Hollowbelly turned to Featherpaw. Please say nothing about this, he meowed. There is no need to spread alarm, not when the future is lost in mist, even to Star Clan. Promise me that you won't tell any of your clanmates. Promise on the lives of your ancestors. Featherpaw blinked. I promise, he whispered. Hollowbelly nodded. Thank you, Featherpaw. Go well. Nudging Molepelt to his paws, he led the old medicine cat away into the trees. Featherpaw gazed after them. After a few heartbeats, he scrambled out from underneath the holly bush and staggered into the sunlit clearing. Even if Molepelt was telling the truth, it makes no sense, he meowed out loud. How can Thunder Clan? be threatened by a Shadow Clan medicine cat. Chapter One Shadow Clan warriors, attack! Yellow Kit burst out of the nursery and hurtled across the Shadow Clan camp. 
her littermates, Nutkit and Rowankit, scurried after her. Nutkit pounced on a pine cone that lay at the foot of one of the pine trees overhanging the clearing. It's a wind clan warrior, he squealed, batting at it with tiny brown paws. Get out of our territory! Rabbit chasers, Rowan Kit flexed her claws, growling. Prey stealers! Yellow Kit leaped at a straying tendril from the brambles that encircled the camp. Her paws got tangled in it, and she lost her balance, rolling over in a flurry of legs and tail. Scrambling to her feet, she crouched in front of the bramble, her teeth bared in a growl. Trip me up, would you? She squeaked, raking her claws across its leaves. Take that! Nutkit began to scan the clearing, peering around with narrowed amber eyes. Can you see any more Wind Clan warriors on our territory? He asked. Yellowkit spotted a group of elders sharing tongues in a shaft of sunlight. Yes, over there, she yowled. Nutkit and Rowankit followed her as she raced across the hard brown earth and skidded to a halt in front of the elders. Wind Clan warriors! Yellow Kit began, trying to sound as dignified as her clan leader, Cedar Star. Do you agree that Shadow Clan is the best of all the clans? Or do you need to feel our claws in your fur to persuade you? Little Bird, her ginger pelt glowing in the warm light, sat up, giving the other elders an amused glance. No, you're far too fierce for us, she meowed. We don't want to fight. Do you promise to let our warriors cross your territory whenever they want? Rowan Kit growled. We promise. Silver Flame, the mother of Yellow Kit's mother, Bright Flower, flattened herself to the ground and blinked fearfully up at the kits. Lizard Fang cringed away from the three kits, shuffling his skinny brown limbs. Shadow Clan is much stronger than us. Yes. Yellow Kit bounced up in the air. Shadow Clan is the best. In her excitement, she leaped on top of Nutkit, rolling over and over with him in a knot of gray and brown fur. I'm going to be the best warrior in the best clan in the forest, she thought with glee. She broke away from Nutkit and scrambled to her paws. You be a Wind Clan warrior now, she urged. I know some awesome battle moves. Battle moves? A scornful voice broke in. You? You're only a kit. Yellow Kit spun around to see Ragged Kit and his littermate, Scorch Kit, standing a couple of tail lengths away. And what are you? She demanded, facing up to the big dark tabby Tom. You and Scorch Kit were still kits last time I looked. But we'll be apprentices soon, Ragged Kit retorted. It'll be moons and moons before you start training. Yeah, Scorch Kit licked one ginger paw and drew it over his ear. We'll be warriors by then. In your dreams. Rowan Kit bounded up to stand next to Yellow Kit, while Nut Kit flanked her on her other side. There are rabbits who'd make better warriors than you two. Scorch Kit crouched down, his muscles tensed to leap at them, but Ragged Kit blocked him with his tail. They're not worth it, he mewed loftily. Come on, runts, watch us, and we'll show you some real battle moves. You're not our mentors, Nutkit snapped. All you know how to do is mess up our game. Your game? Ragged Kit rolled his eyes. Like you wouldn't go squealing into the nursery if Wind Clan really attacked our camp. Would not, Rowan Kit exclaimed. Ragged Kit and Scorch Kit ignored her, turning their backs on the younger kits. You attack me first, Scorch Kit ordered. Ragged Kit dashed past his littermate, aiming a blow at Scorch Kit's ear. Scorch Kit swung away and pounced on Ragged Kit's tail. Ragged Kit rolled over onto his back, all four paws ready to defend himself. Annoyed as she was, Yellow Kit couldn't help admiring the older Toms. Her paws itched to practice their battle moves, but she knew that she and her littermates would only get sneered at if they tried. Come on, Nutkit nudged her. Let's go and see if there are any mice in the brambles. You won't catch any even if there are, Ragged Kit meowed, rising to his paws and shaking debris from his fur. I wasn't talking to you. Nutkit's fur bristled, and he bared tiny, needle-sharp teeth. Kitty pet! For a moment, all five kittens froze. Yellow Kit could feel her heart pounding. 
Like her littermates, she had heard the elders gossiping, wondering who had fathered Ragged Kit and Scorch Kit, asking one another if it could be true that Featherstorm's mate had been a kitty pet. The young she-cat had often strayed into two-leg place, and she'd never been obviously close to any of the toms in the clan. But Yellow Kit knew that it was something you should never, never say out loud. Ragged Kit took a pace closer to Nut Kit, stiff-legged with fury. What did you call me? He snarled, his voice dangerously quiet. Nut Kit's eyes were wide and scared, but he didn't back down. Kitty pet, he repeated. A low growl came from Ragged Kit's throat. Scorch Kit's gaze darkened, and he flexed his claws. Neither of them looked one bit like a soft, fluffy kitty pet. Yellow Kit braced herself to defend her littermate. Nut Kit, Yellow Kit turned at the sound of her mother's voice. Bright Flower was standing beside the thorn bush that shielded the nursery hollow. Her orange tabby tail was twitching in annoyance. Nut Kit, if you can't play sensibly, then you'd better come back here. You too, Yellow Kit and Rowan Kit. I won't have you fighting. Not fair, Nut Kit muttered as all three littermates began trailing toward the nursery. He scuffed his paws through the pine needles on the ground. They started it. They're just stupid kitty pets, Rowan Kit whispered. Yellow Kit couldn't resist glancing over her shoulder as she reached the thorn bush. Ragged Kit and Scorch Kit stood in the middle of the clearing, glaring after them. The force of Ragged Kit's anger scared her and fascinated her at the same time. Behind it, she could sense something else, a black space that echoed with fearful questioning. She thought of her own father, Brackenfoot, who told stories of patrols and hunting and gatherings at four trees, who let his kits scramble all over him and pretended to be a fox so they could attack him. Yellow Kit loved him and wanted to be like him. What must it be like not to know who your father is, especially if every cat thinks he was a kitty pet? Then Yellow Kit realized that Ragged Kit's gaze had locked with hers. With a squeak of alarm, she ducked underneath the branches and tumbled down into the nursery after her littermates. Chapter Two I'm bored, Nut Kit complained. Let's go play in the warrior's den, Yellow Kit blinked at him. Are you mouse-brained? The warriors will rip our pelts off. Three sunrises had passed since the quarrel with Ragged Kit and Scorch Kit. Yellow Kit still felt uneasy around them and tried to avoid them around the camp. You're a scaredy mouse, Nut Kit taunted her. Go on. Peek under the bush, I dare you. I can't back down now, Yellow Kit thought, bracing herself as she gazed across the clearing to the thick bramble bush where the warriors slept. Like all the Shadow Clan dens, theirs was a shallow dip in the ground, sheltered by tightly woven thorns and enclosed by the circle of brambles. The dens surrounded a clearing beneath pine trees with the entrance to the camp at one end and a large lichen-covered rock known as the Clan Rock, at the other. Rowan Kit nudged Yellow Kit. Don't do it. Bright Flower's got her eye on us. Look over there. She angled her ears to where Bright Flower and Brackenfoot were sharing a vole beside the fresh kill pile. In between mouthfuls, Bright Flower was turning her head to check up on her kits. A wave of affection for her mother washed over Yellow Kit. I'm glad I look like her, she thought. She had seen her own reflection in the puddle once, and almost thought she was gazing at a tiny copy of Bright Flower. Though her pelt was gray, not orange tabby like her mother's, she had the same broad, flat face, snub nose, and wide-set amber eyes. I want to be just like her, and just like my father, Yellow Kit thought. A warrior and a queen. I'll have lots of kits, and I'll bring them up to be great warriors for our clan. I know a game, she announced. You be my kits, and I'll teach you how to catch frogs. Okay? Rowan Kit sat in front of Yellow Kit and wrapped her tail neatly around her paws. Nut Kit rolled his eyes, but said nothing as he came to sit beside Rowan Kit. Yellow Kit let out a hiss. I never 
never saw such untidy kits, she scolded. Not Kit, have you been rolling around in the brambles? And rowing Kit, just look at your chest fur. Give it a good lick right now. Rowan Kit let out a tiny mrow of amusement as she started to lick her chest fur. Nut Kit wriggled as Yellow Kit used her claws to pick imaginary thorns out of his pelt. This is a dumb game, he muttered. And your pelt's not so great either. Yellow Kit gave him a light swat around the ear. Don't you dare speak to your mother like that. She stood back, checking her litter mate's fur carefully, then nodded. Much better. Now, Kits, listen up. We're going to learn how to catch a frog. Nut Kit, pay attention. She flicked her tail over her brother's ear as he watched the jerky flight of a white butterfly. The most important thing to remember about frogs is that they jump. Can I be the frog? Can I? Rowan Kit asked, bouncing up and down in excitement. I can jump really high. Yellow Kit let out a sigh of exasperation. No, you've got to listen. Bright Flower was patting across the clearing toward them. Her eyes were warm and amused. That looks like a good game, she meowed. Yellow Kit, you'll make a great queen one day. And a warrior, Yellow Kit insisted. Of course, Bright Flower purred, if that's what you want. It is. I'll be the best. Yellow Kit broke off as she spotted Cedar Star emerging from his den beneath the oak tree. The clan leader bounded across the clearing and leaped up onto the clan rock. Let all cats old enough to catch their own prey join here beneath the clan rock for a meeting, he yowled. Yellow Kit turned to her mother. What's happening? Wait and see, Bright Flower replied. Come, sit with me and your father. Sweeping her tail around all three kits, Bright Flower led them across the clearing to where Brackenfoot sat beside the fresh kill pile. Meanwhile, more of the clan cats were gathering. Sage Whisker, the medicine cat, slid out from her den in the shadow of the clan rock and sat down facing her leader. Pool Cloud, her belly heavy with kits, hauled herself out of the nursery and padded slowly over to the entrance of the warrior's den where her mate, Toad Skip, had just appeared. Toad Skip's apprentice, Ashpaw, bounded up to join them. The other two apprentices, Frogpaw and Newtpaw, broke off their play fight, shook their pelts, and sat down to listen. Crowtail, Archeye, and Hollyflower pushed their way out of the warrior's den. Finally, Ragged Kit and Scorch Kit appeared from the nursery, followed by their mother, Featherstorm. Their fur was gleaming, and they paced proudly across the camp to stand at the front of the crowd of cats. Yellow Kit suddenly realized what was going on. They're being made apprentices. Shh, Bright Flower responded. Nut Kit, stop scratching your ear. I wish it was our turn, Nut Kit whispered to Yellow Kit. We've got to wait forever. Yellow Kit nodded. Four whole moons. Ragged Kit and Scorch Kit look so grown up, she thought. I can't believe I'll ever be an apprentice. Cedar Star looked down at the two older kits. Cats of Shadow Clan, he began. Today we are gathered for... Yellow Kit squirmed, trying to get comfortable. Her hind paw was tingling as if she'd stepped on a thorn. She twisted around, lifting her pad in an attempt to see it. Cedar Star broke off, looking down at her. Yellow Kit, Bright Flower hissed. Stop wriggling. I've got a thorn in my paw, Yellow Kit wailed. Keep still then, let me look. Bright Flower peered at Yellow Kit's paw, then gave it a brief sniff. There's nothing there, she snapped. Stop fussing and listen to Cedar Star. Yellow Kit realized that all of her clanmates were staring at her. She wished that she could sink into the earth floor of the camp and disappear. Sorry, she muttered, hanging her head. Her paw was still painful, but she gritted her teeth and tried to ignore it. Cats of Shadow Clan. Cedar Star began again. We are here for one of the most important ceremonies in the life of any clan, the making of new apprentices. Ragged Kit and Scorch Kit have reached their sixth moon, and it is time for them to begin their training. A murmur of appreciation came from the surrounding cats, though Yellow Kit heard a quiet comment from Toad Skip, who was sitting nearby. Training half-kitty pets, 
he murmured into Arch Eye's ear. We'll be making hedgehogs into apprentices next. Yellow Kit started to bristle, but Ragged Kit and Scorch Kit hadn't overheard their clanmate's unkind words. The two kits stood with their heads and tails erect and their whiskers quivering. Yellow Kit thought they looked as if they would burst with pride. Ragged Kit, come forward, Cedar Star beckoned to the dark tabby Tom with his tail. Brackenfoot, he went on, you are ready for another apprentice, and you will be mentor to Ragged Paw. I trust you will pass on to him your warrior skills and your loyalty to your clan. My father is going to be Ragged Paw's mentor. A tingle of jealousy shot through Yellow Kit. Now Brackenfoot will spend more time with Ragged Paw than he does with us. Brackenfoot dipped his head. You can trust me, Cedar Star, he meowed. Ragged Paw trotted toward him, and Brackenfoot stepped forward to touch noses with his new apprentice. As they withdrew into the circle of watching cats, Cedar Star called Scorch Kit forward. Crowtail. Scorch Paw will be your first apprentice, the clan leader meowed. You have proven yourself as a warrior, and I know you will pass on all that you have learned to him. Her eyes shining, the small black she-cat padded to the clan rock and gazed up at her leader. I'll do my best, Cedar Star, she responded. Scorch Paw bounded over to her, and the two cats touched noses. Ragged Paw! Scorch Paw! Every cat in the clan yowled the new names and pressed forward to congratulate the two new apprentices. But Yellow Kit and her littermates hung back. They're not so great, Nut Kit muttered. Wait till we're apprentices. We'll show them. Now that the meeting was over, Yellow Kit flopped down on one side and brought her hind leg forward so that she could take a good look at her paw. Pain was still throbbing through it. But however much she probed between her pads, she couldn't find the thorn. Sitting up, she saw that Brackenfoot and Crowtail were leading their new apprentices through the gap in the brambles that circled the camp. They're going to see the territory, Yellow Kit thought enviously. I wish I could go with them. But right now, she could hardly put her hind paw to the ground. Maybe I should go see Sage Whisker. But as Yellow Kit made her way toward the medicine cat's den, hopping awkwardly on three legs, she saw a patrol emerging from the tunnel into the camp. Mudclaw was in the lead with Mousewing. Both were carrying mice. Nettlespot followed, dragging along a squirrel nearly as big as she was. Deer Leap, one of the most senior warriors, had caught a blackbird. Last of all came the young pale brown warrior Lizard Stripe, limping as if her hind paw was hurting her too. Better see Sage Whisker about that thorn, Mudclaw mumbled around his mouth full of prey. Your paw might get infected if it's not seen to. I'm on my way. Lizard Stripe sounded irritated. This is the last time I go chasing mice underneath a thorn bush. She limped past Yellow Kit and vanished between the rocks into the medicine cat's den. Yellow Kit waited patiently until Lizard Stripe emerged again, this time walking almost normally. Thanks, Sage Whisker, the warrior called over her shoulder. Sage Whisker poked her head out from her den. Give it a good lick, she instructed, and see me again tomorrow so I can make sure it hasn't gotten infected. Yellow Kit stumbled forward, ready to tell Sage Whisker about the thorn in her own foot, but when she put her hind paw on the ground, she realized the pain had gone. The thorn must have fallen out. She looked around her, trying to see it on the grass, but there was nothing that looked sharp enough. Oh, well, as long as it doesn't hurt anymore. She pressed her paw harder on the ground, making sure it was truly better. Hey, Yellow Kit, Rowan Kit's voice interrupted her. Yellow Kit looked up to see both her littermates standing beside a broken tree stump not far from the elder's den. New branches had started to sprout from the remains of the trunk, making a shady cave. Come over here, Nut Kit squealed. We have found a fox and her cubs. We've got to drive them out of our camp. For a heartbeat, Yellow Kit believed him, and her neck fur bristled. Then she realized this was just another game. Oh, yes. The elders will make really scary foxes. Silver Flame was peering out of the elders' den as Yellow Kit bounded over to join her littermates. 
Her fur stood on end, and her teeth were bared. This is our den, Silverflame hissed. Stay away, or I'll strip your fur off and feed you to my cubs. Go on, attack them. Little Bird peered over Silverflame's shoulder. With her ginger pelt, she looked a lot like a fox cub. I just fancy a nice, fat kit. No, Yellow Kit yowled. This is Shadow Clan's camp. No foxes allowed. She hurled herself at Silverflame, trying to grab a hold of the old she-cat's fur. Silverflame batted at her with soft paws, her claws sheathed. Rowan Kit and Nut Kit raced past them into the den. Out, out, Nut Kit squeaked. Yellow Kit and Silverflame rolled into the open. Yellow Kit ended up on top, clinging to Silverflame's belly fur. Do you give in? She demanded. No more eating cats! No more, I promise, Silverflame responded. Then she let out a gusty sigh. Go on, my old bones won't stand much more of this. As Yellow Kit bounced off her, Silverflame sat up and shook her gray and orange pelt, panting a little as she caught her breath. She blinked affectionately at Yellow Kit, and a purr rose in her throat. Well fought, little one, she mewed. I can see you're going to be one of the best warriors in Shadow Clan. You're right about that, thought Yellow Kit, her chest swelling with pride. Watch out, foxes. Chapter 3 Yellow Kit found it hard to get to sleep that night. She had often complained about the nursery seeming too crowded, but now that Ragged Paw and Scorch Paw had left for the apprentice's den, it felt oddly empty. Featherstorm had returned to the warrior's den, so the only cats in the nursery besides Yellow Kit and her littermates were Bright Flower and Pool Cloud, whose kits were close to being born. I'll never get to sleep if Pool Cloud keeps snoring, Yellow Kit thought crossly, wriggling around in the moss and pine needles that lined the floor of the nursery. Keep still, Bright Flower mewed drowsily. How is a cat supposed to get any rest? With a snort of annoyance, Yellow Kit curled up and wrapped her tail over her nose. Peering over the top of it, she could just make out Rowan Kit tucked close into their mother's side, and Nut Kit sprawled on the moss, his legs and tail twitching as if he was dreaming about racing through the forest. I wish Star Clan would send me a good dream, Yellow Kit thought. She slept at last, only to wake again with a start. A faint dawn light was filtering through the brambles. Pool Cloud was still snoring softly. Bright Flower and Rowing Kit were curled up together. Nut Kit was squirming about in the bedding, letting out soft moans of pain. Yellow Kit realized what had woken her. Her belly felt heavy, and every couple of heartbeats pain shot through it. I guess Nut Kit's belly is hurting too. She prodded her brother gently with one paw. Do you have cramps in your belly? She whispered. Nutkit's eyes blinked open, and he peered blearily at his sister. How do you know? My belly is aching too, Yellow Kit retorted, wincing as another deep cramp coursed through her. She pressed her belly hard against the moss as if she could squash the pain out of it. We've got to tell Bright Flower, she grunted. She'll get Sage Whisker. No. Nutkit's eyes stretched wide with alarm. Yellow Kit, don't, please. Why not? Yellow Kit asked. She narrowed her eyes at her brother. What have you been up to? Before Nut Kit could reply, Bright Flower raised her head, twitching her whiskers in annoyance. Will you, Kit, settle down? She began. This isn't the time for playing. You... She broke off, and her gaze grew more intent, swiveling from Nut Kit to Yellow Kit and back again. What's the matter? Our bellies are hurting. <sighs> Yellow Kit replied, her words ending with a low wail as another wave of pain surged over her. Please get Sage Whisker. Before she had finished speaking, Bright Flower had risen to her paws, careful not to disturb the sleeping rowing kit, and patted across the moss to give each of her kits a careful sniff. Have you been eating something you shouldn't? She asked. Tell me quickly now. Sage Whisker will need to know. No, I... Uh... Another gasp of pain interrupted Nutkit. All right, he went on when he could speak again. 
I found a dead sparrow among the brambles yesterday. I only tasted it to see what it was like. Not Kit, Brightflower let out a sigh of exasperation. You know what I've told you about eating crow food. You too, Yellow Kit. How could you be so stupid? But I didn't, Yellow Kit protested. Her mother gazed at her sternly. Eating crow food is bad, and lying about it is even worse, she meowed. Hot indignation surged through Yellow Kit, almost driving out the pain in her belly. I'm not lying, she insisted. I never even saw the stupid sparrow. Tell her, Nut Kit. I didn't see Yellow Kit there, but... <laughs> Nut Kit's words ended in a groan. And how do you suppose you got a bellyache if you didn't eat it? Bright Flower twitched her tail tip angrily. I'm very disappointed in both of you, especially you, Yellow Kit. Now come outside so you don't disturb Rowing Kit and Pool Cloud. I'll go get Sage Whisker. Yellow Kit didn't argue anymore as she scrambled out of the moss and pine needles. Still simmering with indignation, she clambered up the side of the hollow and wriggled under the branches of the thorn bush. The sky above the pine trees was pale with the approach of dawn. Just inside the entrance to the camp, Mousewing was on guard, his black pelt barely visible against the brambles. He yawned and stretched, not noticing Bright Flower as she bounded across the clearing to the medicine cat's den. Wincing from the pain in her belly, Yellow Kit flopped down beside her brother and waited for her mother to reemerge from the den with Sage Whisker. You'd better tell Bright Flower the truth about eating that sparrow, Nutkit murmured. You're only making it worse for yourself. For the last time, I did not eat any dodgy sparrow, Yellow Kit snapped. I've got more sense. Nutkit gave her a disbelieving look, but said nothing more. A moment later, Sage Whisker emerged from her den and trotted across to the nursery, followed closely by Bright Flower. Kits, the medicine cat exclaimed, dropping a bundle of leaves as she halted in front of Yellow Kit and Nutkit. If it's not one thing, it's another. Have you no sense? What are you going to give us? Yellow Kit whimpered, sniffing at the leaves as another spasm cramped her belly. Are you going to make us sick to get the bad stuff out of us? Sage Whisker gazed at her intently. That's exactly what I'm going to do, the medicine cat meowed. And this is the herb we need for it, Yarrow. Bending her head, she gave Nut Kit and then Yellow Kit a long sniff. Bright Flower tells me you've been eating crow food, she continued. Nut Kit let out a moan of pain. It was only a mouthful. <laughs> Two, maybe. Sage Whisker sighed. Or three or four. Now you know why we teach kits not to do that. Will they be okay? Bright Flower fretted, giving Nut Kit's ears a comforting lick. They'll be fine, Sage Whisker assured her. Right, kits, I want you to eat this yarrow. It will make you sick, and then your belly will feel a whole lot better. Nutkit gave the herbs a suspicious glare. Are they yucky? The medicine cat nodded. They are pretty yucky, she admitted. But would you rather have a yucky taste or the belly ache? I'll eat them, I guess, Nutkit responded. Not here, please, Bright Flower mewed. We don't want a mess right outside the nursery. In spite of Nutkit's feeble protests, she picked him up by the scruff and carried him toward the edge of the camp. Sage Whisker padded alongside, carrying the yarrow, while Yellow Kit followed, staggering a little as pain roiled through her insides. By now, the dawn light had strengthened. Several warriors had emerged from their den, and Stone Tooth, the clan deputy, was organizing the dawn patrols. Yellow Kit felt a pang of envy as she spotted Ragged Paw and Scorch Paw with their mentors. She quickened her pace, stumbling a little, hoping the apprentices wouldn't spot her and ask what was happening. In the shelter of the thorns at the edge of the clearing, Sage Whisker laid a few yarrow leaves in front of Nut Kit and the rest of the bundle in front of Yellow Kit. While Nut Kit was still hesitating, Yellow Kit lapped up the leaves, wincing as the bitter juices filled her mouth. Yuck! She gasped, gagging as she tried to swallow. After a few heartbeats, she managed to force the vile stuff down. Almost at once, she felt her belly give an enormous heave, and she vomited up several mouthfuls of slime. She passed her tongue over her lips, trying to get rid of the taste. That's good, 
Sage Whisker murmured approvingly, as Nutkit too brought up the contents of his belly. Bright flower, take them back to the nursery. They should sleep now. When they wake, they can have some milk, but no food today. I'll check on them later. Thank you, Sage Whisker. Bright flower dipped her head to the medicine cat. And let that be a lesson to you, she added to her kids. No more crow food. But I didn't eat crow food. Yellow Kit's indignation surged up again now that her belly didn't hurt anymore. It's not fair. Why won't any cat believe me? Bright Flower let out a hiss. No more, she mewed. I won't punish you for lying this time because you've suffered enough, but don't let it happen again. Without waiting for Yellow Kit to respond, she grabbed Nut Kit by the scruff and headed for the nursery. Yellow Kit padded after them, her head down and her tail drooping. Her belly was sore from vomiting, and she could still taste the bitter yarrow. But what made her really miserable was the thought that her mother believed she was a liar. Yellow Kit pushed her way into the open, yawning and arching her back in a long stretch. She was bored. Behind her in the nursery, Nutkit was still asleep half buried in the moss as if he was exhausted from his disturbed night and his upset belly. But I feel fine, Yellow Kit thought, except my belly's growling. Bright Flower had just reminded her that Sage Whisker had said she and Nutkit couldn't have anything to eat until tomorrow. I'll never last that long, Yellow Kit wailed inwardly. I'll be as weak as a mouse. Blinking, she gazed around the camp, Hollyflower and Crowtail were sharing tongues outside the warrior's den, while the elders were gossiping in a patch of warm sun beside the tree stump. Yellow Kit caught a scrap of their conversation. Sent that Wind Clan warrior squealing all the way back to his camp, Lizard Fang meowed. We didn't put up with any nonsense from Wind Clan in my day, let me tell you. No, and not from Thunder Clan either, Silver Flame purred. Yellow Kit's heart swelled with love for the old she cat. Maybe if I go over there, she'll tell me a story. Then she shook her head. No, more likely I'd have to listen to Lizard Fang yakking on about all the Wind Clan warriors he chased off. In the middle of the clearing, Rowan Kit was playing by herself, tossing a ball of moss into the air and catching it on her tiny extended claws. Yellow Kit didn't feel like joining in. I wish I could go out and explore the territory like Ragged Paw and Scorch Paw. Flicking her tail and trying not to look as if she was going anywhere special, Yellow Kit padded across the camp toward the fresh kill pile. The sun was shining, and the patches of sky visible through the trees were a clear blue. But there was a chill in the air, and the leaves on the huge oak tree where Cedar Star made his den were beginning to turn yellow. Greenleaf was coming to an end. Yellow Kit felt hungrier than ever when she approached the fresh kill pile, and the enticing scents of vole and squirrel flooded her jaws. She absolutely had to have something to eat if she was going to sneak out of the camp. One little mouse couldn't hurt. Hey, Yellow Kit. Yellow Kit jumped guiltily. Turning to see who was calling her, she spotted Sage Whisker sunning herself at the entrance to her den. Uh-oh. Nothing until tomorrow the medicine cat warned her. I'm surprised you can even think about eating yet. I'm starving. Sage Whisker stifled a purr of amusement. Would you rather have a bellyache, little kit? Yellow Kit scuffled her forepaws in the earth of the camp floor. I guess not. Why don't you come and help me with a few things? The medicine cat suggested. All the apprentices are out, and I need someone to give me a paw sorting my herbs. It might take your mind off your empty belly. Okay, Yellow Kit perked up. She liked the sharp scents of herbs in the medicine cat's den, and she needed something to stop herself from thinking about food. She followed Sage Whisker back into the den. Beyond the narrow entrance that lay between two boulders, a tiny clearing opened out, edged by thick clumps of fern. At the far side, a pool of clear water reflected the pine trees above. The herbs are over here, Sage Whisker padded to one side of the clearing. I dig holes in the ground to keep them fresh and cover them up with fern fronds. She picked up one of the fronds and laid it aside. Yellow Kit peered into the hole beneath. 
A few withered leaves lay at the bottom. That's marigold, Sage Whisker meowed. It's good for infected wounds, but as you can see, those scraps aren't much good. Lift them out and pile them up by the entrance. Later on, I'll carry all the rubbish out of the camp. While Yellow Kid obeyed, Sage Whisker uncovered the next hole. It held only two or three shriveled berries. Should I add those to the pile? Yellow Kid asked, dipping her paw into the hole, ready to scoop out the berries. Sage Whisker shook her head, flicking her tail across to block Yellow Kid's paw. No, those are juniper berries. I know they're past their best, but they're so useful for bellyache and shortness of breath. I won't dare throw them away until the fresh ones are ready. It won't be long, thanks, Star Clan. Yellow Kid nodded, giving the berries an interested sniff. Silver Flame wheezes sometimes, she remarked. Do you give her juniper berries? I do, Sage Whisker dipped her head. You're learning fast, Yellow Kit. Yellow Kit felt proud of herself. This is so useful. I'll know about herbs and everything when I'm a warrior. What's in the next hole? She asked. These are daisy leaves, Sage Whisker replied, uncovering a pile of fresh leaves. Good for lizard fangs aching joints. I only collected them yesterday, so we don't have to throw them out. Yellow Kit followed her along the row of holes, while Sage Whisker told her about each different herb and what they were used for, sorting out the withered ones so that Yellow Kit could pile them up at the entrance. There, finished, Sage Whisker mewed at last, dusting off her paws. Well done, Yellow Kit. You've been a big help. It was fun, Yellow Kit replied, realizing with a start that it was true. I had no idea how much you have to learn to be a medicine cat. And your belly feels fine now? Yellow Kit nodded. Still empty, though, she mewed. Sage Whisker touched Yellow Kit's ear with her nose. Then you'll remember to stay away from crow food in the future. Yellow Kit heaved a deep sigh. Yes, okay, she muttered. There wasn't any point in arguing. She knew that no cat was going to believe her. But if it wasn't the crow food, she asked herself as she padded back to the nursery. What did make my belly ache like nut kits? Chapter 4 Yellow Kit's paw landed squarely on top of the quivering mouse, and it went limp. Her jaws watered as she bent her head to take the first succulent bite. When something slammed into her back, her eyes flew open, her dream fled away, and she found herself in the nursery. Pool Cloud's kits, Fox Kit and Wolf Kit, were wrestling together in the moss, rolling over so they were half on top of Yellow Kit. Kit off, she muttered, giving the nearest kit a shove. I could almost taste that mouse. Yawning, Yellow Kit sat up. Bright Flower and Pool Cloud were still asleep, but beside her in the mossy nest, Nut Kit and Rowan Kit were beginning to stir. There's something odd about the nursery this morning, Yellow Kit thought. The light was different, and there was a clean, cold scent in the air that she had never smelled before. Curious, Yellow Kit scrambled over the moss and stuck her head through the branches. Her jaws gaped, and she let out a gasp of astonishment. The camp lay under a thick white covering, and more of the white stuff weighed down the branches of the encircling pine trees. Wow! Yellow Kit squeaked. What happened? Nut Kit and Rowan Kit appeared beside her, their eyes round as they gazed out. Did Wind Clan do this to us? Nut Kit growled. I'll shred their fur. No, Bright Flower pushed her way out of the nursery, her paws sinking into the white stuff, and turned to look back at her kits. Her eyes were warm with amusement. This is snow. We get it sometimes in Leaf Bear. Where did it come from? Rowan Kit asked. It falls out of the sky, Bright Flower explained. Like rain, but snow looks like falling feathers. Extending one paw, Yellow Kit dabbed at the white stuff. It's cold! Nut Kit let out a yowl of excitement and launched himself into the snow, his weight hardly denting the surface. Wait for me! Yellow Kit charged after him, with Rowan Kit a tail length behind. She could hear more squealing from the nursery, telling her that Fox Kit and Wolf Kit were following. 
This is fun. But as Yellow Kit raced across the camp after her littermate, she felt as if something was holding her back. Rowan Kit overtook her with an excited squeak. Trying to force her legs to run faster, Yellow Kit realized that the snow was clogging up her thick fur, dragging at her and slowing her down. That's not fair, she thought indignantly. A moment later, her paws skidded out from under her as Fox Kit crashed into her. Got you, the younger Kit squealed. You're as slow as a hedgehog, Yellow Kit. Struggling out from underneath her den mate, Yellow Kit looked at the other Kit's smooth ginger pelt. No wonder it was easier for her to run fast in the snow. Taking a breath as she tried to shake the clots of snow from her pelt, she felt her mouth burning in the crisp, dry air. I'm thirsty, she announced. I'm going to get a drink. You just want an excuse to stop running, Fox Kit taunted. Yellow Kit opened her jaws to respond, then decided that arguing with Fox Kit wasn't worth it. Four moons old, and she thinks she knows everything. Glancing around the camp, she spotted the early morning light gleaming on a pool of melted snow just outside the warrior's den. Silver Flame was crouched beside it, lapping steadily. Yellow Kit went to join her, but Silver Flame didn't look up. The old cat must have been super thirsty. She always seemed to be drinking these days. A sharp pain stabbed at Yellow Kit's belly as she started to drink the icy water, and her fur prickled as though a storm was brewing. Yellow Kit tilted her head on one side. There had been storms in the heavy days of Greenleaf when gray clouds would cover the sky and the air felt hot and damp, but today the sky was clear and pale, and the rising sun cast blue shadows across the snow-covered camp. A cold, dry breeze ruffled the white surface. No storms today, Yellow Kit told herself. Hi, Yellow Kit, Silver Flame paused in her lapping at last. Enjoying your first snow? Yellow Kit turned to reply and winced at the look of exhaustion and pain in the old she-cat's eyes. It's okay, I guess, she replied. Silver Flame, are you all right? Silver Flame shrugged. It's just the moons catching up with me, she mewed. Don't worry, Yellow Kit. This cold weather does nothing for old bones, Little Bird agreed as she emerged from the elder's den and headed for the fresh kill pile. Glancing back, she added, Are you coming, Silver Flame? The she-cat shook her head. I'm not hungry. The young ones need to eat more than I do. Yellow Kit frowned. What does Silver Flame mean? All cats need to eat. Come on, she urged, giving Silver Flame a gentle push. Let's go together and find something tasty. Okay. With a huge sigh, Silver Flame rose to her paws. Yellow Kit thought that the elder's paw steps looked a bit shaky as she padded over to the fresh kill pile. Little Bird was already clawing the snow away from it, revealing the heap of frozen prey. Here, try this frog. Yellow Kit dragged it out of the pile and set it down in front of Silver Flame. The elder blinked at the frog for a couple of heartbeats as if she had never seen one before, then lowered her head and took a small bite. Yellow Kit chose a mouse for herself, but kept an eye on Silver Flame as she was eating. The old cat was barely picking at her prey. In the sharp, slanting sunlight, Yellow Kit could see Silver Flame's bones showing beneath her fur, as if the elder hadn't been eating properly for days. After two or three more bites of the frog, Silver Flame pushed it toward Yellow Kit with one paw. I've had enough. You finish it. She turned and tottered away vanishing into the elder's den. Yellow Kit stared anxiously after her. She didn't want to finish the frog. The mouse she had eaten was weighing heavy in her belly, and she wondered if there might have been something wrong with it. Her fur was still prickling, too. There was a rustle of frozen brambles, and Sage Whisker emerged into the camp. She carried a few frost-bitten twigs in her jaws, and as Yellow Kit bounded over to her, she recognized shriveled juniper berries clinging to them. Sage Whisker, she called, catching up with the medicine cat just outside her den. Sage Whisker carefully laid the twigs down. What is it, Yellow Kit? It's Silver Flame, Yellow Kit explained, struggling to stop her voice from shaking. I think she's sick. She doesn't want to eat anything. Sage Whisker blinked at her. Silver Flame is old, she mewed. 
and Leaf Bear is hard for the newest and the oldest members of the clan. But she... Yellow Kit's voice died away. There aren't any herbs to stop a cat from getting old, she thought miserably. I'll look in on her, Sage Whisker promised. Yellow Kit nodded, knowing she had to accept what the medicine cat said. I wish I could do something to help. Then she remembered how thirsty Silver Flame always seemed. She must get so cold, coming out to drink at the pool. If I found some moss, I could bring her a drink into her den. Feeling better now that she had a plan, Yellow Kit plunged through the snow to where a fallen tree lay among the thorn bushes that surrounded the camp. As she pushed her way beneath the spiky branches, she dislodged clumps of snow that showered down over her head and shoulders. Yellow Kit let out a snarl as she shook the icy flakes from her pelt. The moss-covered tree was just ahead of her, but as she reached out to strip off a pawful of moss, Yellow Kit heard voices on the other side of the brambles. Curious, she scrambled over the tree trunk and wriggled farther through the thorns, her paws tingling with excitement as she realized she was almost outside the camp. Peering cautiously through the branches, Yellow Kit saw a flat stretch of ground enclosed by the dark trunks of pine trees. The surface of the snow was churned up, and Brackenfoot was standing with Ragged Paw in the middle of the rough patch. You've learned that move really well, Brackenfoot was meowing. Now you need to work on getting more power into your swipe. Let's try it again. Yellow Kit watched, fascinated, as Brackenfoot crouched down in the snow and Ragged Paw charged at him, darting in to rake his paw over his mentor's ear and leaping back before Brackenfoot could retaliate. Better, Brackenfoot praised him. Try again. Harder. This time Brackenfoot rose to his paws and waited with muscles tensed for Ragged Paw's attack. As Ragged Paw struck out, Brackenfoot ducked so that the blow only ruffled his fur. Ragged Paw leaped at him again, and suddenly the two cats were locked together, swiping at each other with all four paws as they struggled to pin the other to the ground. Yellow Kit drew in a breath of mingled excitement and horror, terrified that her clanmates would injure each other, until she noticed that they were fighting with sheathed claws. I can't believe how good Ragged Paw is, she thought with a twinge of envy. He's still only an apprentice. A moment later, Ragged Paul let out a yowl of triumph. He was standing on top of Brackenfoot, his forepaws pinning down his mentor's shoulders, while one hind paw was fixed firmly on his tail. Brackenfoot was panting, his eyes half closed, and his muscles limp. Yellow Kit's eyes widened in dismay, and she flexed her claws, ready to dash out and defend her father. I won! Ragged Paul meowed. His eyes blazed as he looked down at his mentor. I'm the best fighter in the clan. Before the last words were out of his jaws, Brackenfoot surged upward, flinging Ragged Paw off him and rolling him over in the snow. What was that again? He asked mildly as Ragged Paw scrambled up with snow clumped all over his pelt. Yellow Kit let out a gleeful mrow to see that her father hadn't lost the battle after all. Ragged Paw thinks he's so great. Ragged Paw glared at his mentor. You cheated! You pretended to be beaten! And you think that an enemy won't do that when you fight in a real battle? You're doing well, Ragged Paw, and you'll be a great fighter one day. But you still have a lot to learn. Ragged Paw shook himself, spraying snow everywhere. His shoulders sagged. You're right, he admitted. I'm sorry. Will you teach me that move? Another time. Brackenfoot promised. We've done enough for today. Let's get back to camp, and you can take something from the fresh kill pile. Thanks, Ragged Paw's eyes glowed. I'm starving. Brackenfoot turned toward the camp entrance, and Ragged Paw was about to follow. Suddenly he froze, and Yellow Kit shrank back as she realized the apprentice was staring straight at her. What do you think you're doing? Ragged Paw demanded. Hey, Brackenfoot! Yellow Kit spying on us. Brackenfoot glanced back, spotting his daughter among the thorns. Don't be such a mouse brain, he told Ragged Paw. Yellow Kit can watch if she wants. She might learn something. Ragged Paw let out a snort of disgust, but said nothing more. Her fur hot with embarrassment, Yellow Kit scrambled backward until she reached the fallen tree again. Tearing off a pawful of thick moss, 
She scampered across the camp to soak it in the puddle before carrying it to the elder's den. Here, silver flame, she mumbled around her mouthful as she poked her head underneath the branches. I brought you a drink. All three elders were huddled together in the shelter of the stump. Little Bird narrowed her eyes at Yellow Kit. Keep that wet moss away from our bedding, she snapped. Yes, Lizard Fang agreed. You should know better than to bring it in here. Yellow Kit suppressed an angry hiss, remembering she ought to be polite to the elders, even when they were being a pain in the tail. Leave her alone, Silver Flame meowed. That was a very kind thought, Yellow Kit. Gesturing with her tail, she added, put the moss down there, well away from the bedding. When Yellow Kit had obeyed, Silver Flame stretched out her neck and lapped at the dripping fronds. Great Star Clan, that's good, she murmured. Thank you. Shooting a smug glance at the two other elders, Yellow Kit was about to reply when she heard Cedar Star's voice from outside in the camp. Let all cats old enough to catch their own prey join here beneath the clan rock for a meeting. For Star Clan's sake, what now? Lizard Fang complained. Dipping her head briefly to the elders, Yellow Kit backed out of the den, almost colliding with her mother as she spun around to see what was going on. There you are, Bright Flower exclaimed. I've been searching everywhere for you. Why? What's happening? Yellow Kit mewed. Just behind her mother, she spotted Rowan Kit and Nut Kit, looking unusually well-groomed. Nut Kit was bouncing up and down on his paws, while Rowan Kit's eyes were wide and shining. You're going to be made apprentices, Bright Flower explained. Yellow Kit stared at her. Now? Yes, now. And just look at you. Bright Flower darted out a paw and snagged a spiky twig that was stuck in Yellow Kit's pelt. Any cat would think you'd been wriggling through thorns all day. Yellow Kit stood still while Bright Flower gave her a quick grooming, flicking bits of thorn and moss out of her fur and smoothing it with strong strokes of her tongue. Meanwhile, the cats of Shadow Clan were gathering around the clan rock. All three elders poked their heads out from under the branches that shaded their den. Deer Leap and Amber Leaf appeared from the warrior's den, followed closely by Toad Skip and Featherstorm. Brackenfoot and Raggedpaw, who were eating beside the fresh kill pile, finished their prey quickly and turned to listen. Crowtail and Scorchpaw padded over to join them. Yellow Kit's belly began to churn. Every cat will be looking at me. What if I get something wrong? Who will be my mentor? This is going to be a hard leaf bear, Cedar Star began. With snow on the ground, we need all the hunters we can get and border patrols to defend our territory when the other clans get hungry. So this is a good time to strengthen Shadow Clan by making new apprentices. Rowing Kit, come forward. Rowing Kit swallowed nervously, then padded forward until she stood beneath the clan rock. Cedar Star's gaze swept over his clan. Finch flight, he meowed. You have served your clan well, and you deserve to have another apprentice. I know you will pass on your skills to Rowan Paul. Rowan Paul gave a little skip of delight at the sound of her new name, then trotted over to Finch Flight and touched noses with him. The black and white Tom let out an approving purr. Cedar Star beckoned Nutkit with his tail. Nutkit, come forward, he meowed. Nutkit paced proudly across the clearing. Amberleaf, Cedar Star continued, dipping his head to the dark orange she cat. You are a skilled warrior, and I know you will give Nutpaw the training he needs. Nutpaw's got Amberleaf. Yellow Kit barely stopped herself from exclaiming out loud. She's so strict. All the young cats were a bit afraid of Amberleaf, who had a scathing tongue when she was annoyed. Yellow Kit remembered being scolded by her when she accidentally hit the warrior on the head with a ball of moss. Nutpaw looked nervous as he padded across to Amberleaf to touch noses but relaxed as the she-cat murmured, I'll make you the best warrior you can be. Yellow Kit's heart began pounding harder. When Cedar Star beckoned to her, she padded across the clearing with as much dignity as she could muster. Star Clan, please don't let me trip over a twig. Dear Leap, you are a wise and experienced cat, Cedar Star mewed. I know that you will pass on your qualities to Yellow Paw. 
Yellow Paw spun around to face Deer Leap. The gray tabby she-cat had stepped into the clearing, waiting for her. As she approached her mentor, Yellow Paw saw the friendly gleam in Deer Leap's eyes and decided she was very satisfied with the choice that Cedar Star had made for her. I'll do the best I can, I promise, she mewed fervently as they touched noses. Any reply was drowned in the cheers of the clan as they greeted the new apprentices by their names. Nut Paw, Yellow Paw, Rowan Paw. Yellow Paw saw Bright Flower and Brackenfoot standing side by side, identical expressions of pride on their faces and in their shining eyes. She felt happy enough to burst. Okay, dearly meowed to Yellow Paw when the noise had died down and the cats were beginning to drift away. Why don't we go out for our tour of the territory before it gets dark? Great! Every hair on Yellow Paw's pelt bristled with excitement. Let's go! But as she followed Deer Leap across the camp toward the brambles where Nutpaw and Rowanpaw were already vanishing with their mentors, she staggered as a sharp pain shot through her belly. She couldn't suppress a yelp. Deer Leap turned around. What's the matter? Yellow Paw could hardly stay on her paws. The pain filled her body, darkening her vision. She had never felt anything so bad. Pain? It hurts? She managed to gasp. You'd better see Sage Whisker, Deer Leap meowed. But I want to see the, the territory, Yellow Paw protested. The territory won't go away, Deer Leap's voice was determined. She laid her tail across her apprentice's shoulders. Come along. As she stumbled across the camp, Yellow Paw fought against her disappointment. I want to start training now. I don't have time to be sick. But when she reached the medicine cat's den, there was no sign of her. You looking for Sage Whisker? Toad Skip was on his way to the fresh kill pile. I saw her go into the elder's den. Thanks, Toad Skip. Deer Leap led the way toward the tree stump. When they approached the den, Yellow Paw heard drawn out moans as if a cat was in agony. Yellow Paw's pain had ebbed a little, but her fur felt strange and began prickling harder and harder with every paw step she took. She was scared of what she might find in the elder's den and could hardly force herself to go in. When she ducked underneath the outer branches of the den, she saw a silver flame stretched in her nest, her body twisted and her eyes glazed with pain. Sage Whisker was crouching over her while Lizard Fang and Little Bird huddled together at the far side, their faces full of fear and pity. The floor was strewn with different herbs, their sharp scents mingling with another sweetish smell that made Yellow Paw gag. Silver Flame is really sick. Yes, what is it? Sage Whisker snapped, not shifting her gaze from the old she cat. I had a pain. But it's nothing, Yellow Paw stammered. Okay, Sage Whisker paused to chew up a mouthful of leaves. See me tomorrow if it doesn't clear up. I will, thanks. Unable to bear watching Silver Flame any longer, Yellow Paw backed out of the den. Are you feeling okay now? Deer Leap asked, a tinge of impatience in her voice. Because if you are, we can set off. Yellow Paw nodded, trying to ignore the nagging pain in her stomach. When she breathed in the scent of the herbs, it had faded to a tolerable ache. I'm fine, she insisted. Deer Leap led the way through the brambles. Excitement surged over Yellow Paw as she followed, almost driving out her anxiety about Silver Flame. Heartbeats later, she stood outside the camp for the first time. Pine trees stretched into the distance on every side. Wow, she breathed. The forest goes on forever. Not quite, Deer Leap responded, a glint of amusement in her eyes. Come on, we'll go this way. The ground between the trees was flat and almost clear of undergrowth. Yellow Paw spotted tracks crisscrossing it, the spiky claw marks of birds, cat paw prints from an earlier patrol, and larger prints tipped with claws that she had never seen before. She paused to sniff at them and picked up a trace of a rank smell that felt faintly threatening. Deer Leap had halted and was looking back. Come on, Yellow Paw. What's this? Yellow Paw mewed. Deer Leap gave the tracks a swift glance. Fox, she stated. 
Yellowpaw shivered and glanced around, half expecting to spot a slim russet shape slinking among the trees. She had never seen a fox, but she had heard plenty of stories about them. It's okay, Deerleap told her. That scent is stale, but we need to keep a lookout whenever we're outside the camp. Yellowpaw flexed her claws, wondering what it would be like to fight a fox. Movement among the trees caught her eye, but no fox appeared. Instead, it was a Shadow Clan hunting patrol. Cedar Star was leading the way back to camp with Arch Eye and Featherstorm, all of them carrying prey. Deerleap called a greeting, and the clan leader waved his tail in acknowledgement. A short while later, the pine trees thinned out, replaced by bushes mounded with snow and reeds whose feathery tops rattled together in the breeze. The flat ground became uneven with hidden hollows filled with snow. Yellowpaw let out a squeak as she slid down a dip and sank deep into the powdery white stuff. Deerleap is going to think I'm a stupid kit. But Deerleap just waited until Yellowpaw struggled out and didn't make any comment. When the weather is warmer, the ground here is marshy and wet, she meowed. It's a good place for catching frogs. Yellowpaw nodded. Silver Flame used to enjoy frogs, she thought, remembering how the elder hadn't been eating properly for ages. She realized that Deerleap had asked her a question and had paused, waiting for an answer. Sorry, Yellowpaw muttered. What was that? Deerleap sighed. I asked what you thought would be the best way to catch a frog. I, um, Yellowpaw thought fast. Hide in the reeds and jump out at it, she suggested. Her mentor twitched her whiskers. That might work, but remember frogs can swim, too. It's best to find one on land. Two cats can hunt better than one. One to cut the frog off from the pool it came out of, and one to catch it. We'll practice with the other apprentices when New Leaf comes. Great, Yellowpaw responded, though her thoughts of silver flame moaning in agony dampened her enthusiasm. They came to the edge of the marsh and padded through another belt of pine trees. The trees grew more sparsely here, and reddish, hard-edged shapes loomed beyond the last of them, as tall as the highest trunks. We're coming to the edge of Shadow Clan territory, dearly mewed. Can you smell our scent markers? Yellowpaw sniffed and nodded. She felt proud that the Shadow Clan scent was so strong. That warns other clans not to mess with us. Over in that direction, Deerleap went on, angling her ears toward the ominous shapes, is Two-Leg Place. We don't go there. It's a place for dogs and kitty pets, not warriors. Those are the dens where two legs live. Yellowpaw gazed at the unnaturally straight walls with square holes dotted across their sides, some high up and some closer to the ground. Low wooden barriers surrounded each den, rather like the thorns that surrounded Shadow Clan's camp. As Yellowpaw watched, a kitty pet appeared, balancing carefully on the top of the wooden wall before jumping down to the other side. That cat was wearing something around its neck, she observed. Deerleap nodded. A collar. Most kitty pets have them. It signifies that they belong to two legs and can never be free. Just be thankful you'll never have to wear one. Yellowpaw watched for a little longer, but the kitty pet didn't reappear. She wondered what it would be like to live in the two-leg place. It looked cold and hard and empty. And she was glad when Deerleap moved on again, through another belt of woodland where pines were mixed with other trees. The bare branches creaked over Yellowpaw's head. Yellowpaw soon became aware of an acrid stench in the air and a dull roaring that grew and died away again. Is that thunder? She mewed. You'll see what it is in a few heartbeats, Deerleap told her. When Yellowpaw came to the edge of the trees, she stumbled to a halt. In front of her lay a narrow stretch of ground that led away in both directions as far as she could see. The snow that lay upon it had been churned up in straight lines, leaving dirty brown ridges. Underneath, Yellowpaw could make out a hard black surface. The acrid stench rose from it in waves, smothering all the other scents of the forest. What's that? Yellowpaw gasped. She stretched out a paw to touch the surface. Immediately, Deerleap flicked her tail in front of Yellowpaw. Keep back, she warned. 
At the same moment, the weird roaring sound began again. Yellowpaw tensed as a small creature appeared at the far end of the path. It grew bigger as the roaring grew louder. Soon, she could make it out more clearly. It was an unnatural glittering scarlet, and it had round black paws that seemed to eat up the ground. Heartbeats later, it swept past, spattering Yellowpaw with dirty, half-melted snow. For a moment, its bellowing and vile reek filled the air. Then it was gone, dwindling into the distance as the sound died away. It didn't spot us, Yellowpaw mewed in relief. Mostly they don't, Deer Leap responded. They keep to the Thunderpath and don't bother us provided we stay away from it. But cats have died trying to cross, so don't even think about it. That's the Thunderpath? Yellowpaw asked. Then that must have been a monster. Brackenfoot told us about them when we were in the nursery. He said the monsters have two legs in their bellies, but I thought that was just a tale for kids. No, it's true, Deer Leap meowed. Those things eat two legs? Not exactly, Deer Leap sounded puzzled. The two legs get out of them again, and they seem okay. I don't know what it's all about, but then two legs are strange. The stink of the monster was dying away, and as she tasted the air, Yellowpaw could pick up another scent she didn't recognize. It was the scent of cats, but harsher than the warm, comforting Shadow Clan scent she was used to. What's that yucky smell? That's Thunder Clan, Deer Leap explained, waving her tail toward the trees on the other side of the Thunderpath. Their territory is over there. Really? The scent marks seemed so close. Yellowpaw imagined a patrol of hostile ThunderClan cats charging across the Thunderpath, invading her territory. Her neck fur started to bristle, and she dug her claws into the ground. They'd better not try it. But there was no movement among the trees on the opposite side of the Thunderpath. Nothing to suggest an enemy patrol was lurking there. Feeling slightly disappointed, Yellowpaw turned away. Where do we go next? Follow me. Deer Leap led the way alongside the Thunderpath and stopped at a point where the ground fell away into a deep cleft that became a tunnel leading into darkness. The sides were lined with squared off stones. Did two legs make that? Yellowpaw mewed. They did. Deer Leap sounded pleased and a little surprised that Yellowpaw had guessed right. Don't ask me why. It leads under the Thunderpath and up on the other side. Into ThunderClan territory? They could come right through it and attack us. No, it's still our territory on the other side, all the way to the hollow at Four Trees. It's the way we go for gatherings. Yellowpaw's paws tingled. Now that I'm an apprentice, I'll get to go to gatherings. When she was three moons old, she had begged and begged to go to a gathering. Silverflame had promised to tell her everything that happened, and the day after, she had kept her promise. She made it sound so exciting. I hope she'll be better by the next full moon so we can go together. She was dragged abruptly out of her memories as Deer Leap flicked her on the shoulder with her tail tip. Wake up, her mentor chided. We've still got a long way to go. They walked on, sticking close to the Thunderpath with the two-legged dens fading into the trees behind them. Over there, Deer Leap continued, is another tunnel. That one leads straight into Wind Clan territory. What do you think that means? Trouble! Yellowpaw exclaimed. Right. So what should we do about it? Patrol really carefully, Yellowpaw suggested. And, uh, put really strong scent markers around our end? Deer Leap nodded. Exactly. Good thinking, Yellowpaw. A few fox lengths farther on, Yellowpaw spotted Rowanpaw trotting toward them with her mentor, Finchflight. Rowan Paul waved her tail. Isn't this great? She called. Our territory is awesome. Yellow Paul mewed agreement, but there wasn't time to stop and chat. Deer Leap was forging ahead, and Yellow Paul had to scurry to keep up. By now the sun was starting to go down, staining the snow as red as blood. Shadows began to gather under the trees, and the monsters that swept past on the Thunderpath had glaring yellow eyes that cut through the darkness. Eventually, Deer Leap veered away from the Thunderpath and headed back to the trees. Darker shadows loomed ahead, 
and Yellowpaw tried to hide her nervousness as Deer Leap plunged into them. Finally, her mentor stopped. What can you smell? she asked. Yellowpaw parted her jaws and tasted the air. Very strong Shadow Clan scent, she reported. Are we near the border again? We are. But is there anything else? Yellowpaw took in another breath, trying to distinguish other scents beneath the overpowering scent of Shadow Clan. Oh! she exclaimed. Something really nasty. Is it another clan? No. That's the Carrion Place. Deer Leap flicked her tail toward the shadows. Peering more closely, Yellowpaw made out huge heaps of evil-smelling stuff. Weird shapes that gleamed in the half-light poked out of a mountain of sludge and debris. A shiny fence, like a thick, regular cobweb, surrounded them. What's that stuff? She mewed. How did it get there? Two legs bring it in yellow monsters, Deer Leap replied with a look of disgust. It's two-leg crow food, and before you ask, I don't know why they dump it there. Yuck. Yellowpaw passed her tongue around her jaws. I can almost taste it from here. Stay away from it, Deer Leap warned her. More rats than you can imagine live in those heaps, and even experienced warriors think twice before messing with them. There's no way I'd want to go there, Yellowpaw assured her. She was happy to leave the carrion place behind and head back into the forest. Night had fallen, and the first warriors of Star Clan were appearing in the sky. The snow gleamed eerily beneath the trees. What's over there? Yellowpaw curled her tail to where the pine trees stretched on and on until they melted into shadow. More forest, Deer Leap replied. No cats go that way. We have enough territory without it. Yellowpaw felt a stab of relief that they didn't have to go any farther. Her paws were frozen and starting to feel sore. I've never walked so far, she thought. We're almost back at the camp, Deer Leap announced. You can pick out a piece of fresh kill and then find yourself a nest in the apprentice's den. Yellowpaw blinked. She hadn't considered that she wouldn't be sleeping in the nursery anymore, and she wondered if Ragged Paw and Scorched Paw would welcome her and her littermates. But she pushed that thought to the back of her mind. There was something more important that she had to do first. I need to know how Silver Flame is. She followed Deer Leap through the thorn tunnel and into the clearing. Did you enjoy seeing the territory? Deer Leap prompted. Yes, it was great, thanks, Yellowpaw responded, her paws itching to carry her toward the elders then. Off with you then, Deer Leap flicked her ears. I'll see you at dawn tomorrow. We'll start your training with hunting practice. Yellow Paw knew she should feel excited about that, but her anxiety about Silver Flame was growing stronger with every heartbeat. She ducked her head to her mentor and bounded across the clearing to the elder's den. Just as she reached it, Bright Flower emerged. How oh, it's Silver Flame, Yellow Paw demanded. Growing weaker, Bright Flower replied. Her face was solemn. Be brave, little one. We have to accept that it's time for her to walk with Star Clan. Chapter 5 No! Yellowpaw gasped. She can't leave us! I'm sorry, but she has to. Brightflower bent her head to touch Yellowpaw's ear with her nose. Yellowpaw could see the desperate anxiety in Brightflower's eyes. I know how I'd feel if Brightflower was dying. She must feel the same now that it's her mother who's going to join Star Clan. I want to see her! She choked out. Brightflower nodded. You can, but you must be very quiet. She stepped back and allowed Yellowpaw to slide underneath the branches into the elder's den. Silver Flame was lying on her side, her legs splayed out as if she were running. Her eyes were half closed and her chest heaved with rasping breaths. Sage Whisker crouched over her while Little Bird and Lizard Fang watched from the corner, their eyes gleaming in the darkness. Yellowpaw felt as though her pelt were on fire as she drew closer to the old sick cat. She reeled back, blinking. She's so thirsty, she whispered to Sage Whisker. Why don't you give her something to drink? Why aren't you treating her pain? Sage Whisker looked up, her eyes full of grief. There's nothing more I can do, she murmured. There must be, 
Yellow Paw wailed. Yellow Paw, Little Bird rose to her paws and gave Yellow Paw a gentle nudge. Come with me. No! Yellow Paw felt as if her whole world was full of pain and her grief for Silver Flame. I want to stay with her. You can't help her now, Little Bird mewed softly. Come away. Yellow Paw let herself be urged toward the entrance. Before she ducked under the branches, she looked back. Goodbye, Silver Flame, she whispered. There was no sign that Silver Flame had heard her. She drew a breath that rattled in her throat. As Yellow Paw climbed out of the den, she strained her ears for the next breath. It didn't come. She's dead, isn't she? Yellow Paw whispered. Little Bird nodded. She hunts with Star Clan now. Yellow Paw dug her claws into the ground. She shouldn't be dead. Why didn't Sage Whisker save her? It wasn't. Yellow Paw cut off Little Bird's words with a yowl of rage. She should have saved her. What good is a medicine cat if she can't do that? Come for a walk with me, Little Bird meowed gently. Yes, go with Little Bird. Bright Flower, who had waited outside the den, touched her nose to Yellow Paw's ear. Her eyes blurred by sadness, Yellow Paw followed the small ginger tabby out of the camp. She realized that Little Bird was heading for the marshes Deer Leap had shown her earlier. It felt as though the tour of the territory had happened in another life. Medicine cats can only do their best with the knowledge that they have, Little Bird told her. Star Clan wanted Silver Flame to walk with them. Look, she added, pausing beside a shrub with a few pale green leaves clinging to its spindly branches. There's the juniper bush that Sage Whisker used to help Silver Flame's pain. And in New Leaf, there's also Colt's foot for shortness of breath. But none of it did any good, Yellow Paw snarled. Sage Whisker should have found something better, she lashed her tail. What's the use of being a medicine cat if you can't heal your clanmates? Death is part of life, Little Bird meowed, resting her tail on Yellow Paw's shoulder. Every good warrior goes to Star Clan, and that's a glorious place to end up. She raised one paw and pointed at a star that was shining above their heads. Look, Silver Flame is watching over us now. But I want her back in the clan, Yellow Paw whispered. The star was too far away to mean anything. And how could any cat know that it was Silver Flame? Every cat has to leave sometime, Little Bird murmured. Until then... All we can do is try our hardest to be the best for our clan. As Leaf Bear dragged on, the hard frost made the grass sharp enough to pierce a cat's pads like thorns, and prey stayed deep inside their holes. Yellow Paw felt as if her belly was flapping. It was so empty. But Deer Leap kept her on a grueling training regime. I have to get up before any of you, Yellow Paw grumbled to Nut Paw as she licked a paw and tried to rub sleep out of her eyes. Some mornings we're even out before the dawn patrol, and it's never enough if I catch one piece of prey. Oh no, we can't come back to camp until I've caught two or three. You're doing great, Nut Paw muttered. He was still curled up in the moss of the apprentice's den, and he sounded half asleep. Deer Leap is a fantastic mentor. Yellow Paw snorted, though she was pleased that she had managed to impress her brother. I'm trying really hard, she thought. Surely I'm going to be a good warrior with all this training. Yellow Paw! Uh-oh. Yellow Paw flinched at the sound of her mentor's voice. Coming! She called as she scrambled out of the den. Deer Leap was standing a fox length away, impatiently flexing her claws. The first faint light of dawn was creeping into the sky. Yellow Paul could barely see the outlines of the trees. Stone Tooth was emerging from the warrior's den. He arched his back in a long stretch, and his jaws parted in a yawn. Yellow Paul blinked and tried to look alert. Where are we going today? I thought we might try near the big ash tree, 
Deer Leap replied. No cat has hunted there for a day or two. Yellow Paw's sleepiness vanished as she headed into the forest after her mentor. The air was crisp and cold. Her paws pattered on the hard ground, and she made a conscious effort to walk softly. The dawn light was strengthening as the ash tree came into sight. Deer Leap gestured with her tail for Yellow Paw to take cover behind some brambles. Keep perfectly still, she instructed. Look, listen, and scent. What can you pick up? Yellow Paw drew herself up, her whiskers quivering with concentration, and tried to focus all her senses at once. At first she could hear nothing but the breeze and the bare branches of the ash and the soft sound of her own breath. Then a familiar scent wafted into her jaws, and she pricked her ears. Blackbird! She poked her head out from behind the brambles and spotted the bird pecking among the roots of the ash tree. Remembering to check the direction of the breeze, she worked her way around the outside of the thicket and dropped into her hunter's crouch to creep up on the bird from the other direction. Stealthily, paw step by paw step, Yellow Paw edged forward, her gaze fixed on her quarry. She was aware of Deer Leap watching her, which made her even more determined. I've got to make a good catch. But before Yellow Paw came within pouncing distance, she accidentally stepped on a dead leaf. It crackled under her paw, and the blackbird, alerted by the tiny sound, fluttered up onto a low branch. Mouse dung! Yellow Paw hissed. She patted back to Deer Leap, who was still in cover behind the brambles. Okay, her mentor mewed. What did you do wrong? I stepped on a leaf. Duh. And why did you step on a leaf? I wasn't aware of everything around me, Yellow Paw admitted. I was so focused on the blackbird that I didn't think about where I was putting my paws. Deer Leap gave her an approving nod. Good. You'll remember next time, won't you? Glancing out from the thicket, she added, And now you get another chance. Yellow Paw poked her head out and saw that the bird was back among the tree roots, pecking away as if it had forgotten the threat. I'll get you this time. Checking the wind direction again, she crept forward. This time she looked down at the ground in front of her, assessing everything that lay between her and her prey. She avoided a fallen twig and used a clump of frostbitten grass for extra cover. At last she was close enough to pounce. Bunching her muscles, she shot forward in an enormous leap and sank her claws into the bird before it realized she was there. Once the limp body was securely in her jaws, she trotted back to her mentor. Well done, Deer Leap purred. That was a perfect bit of stalking. Yellow Paw felt warm all over. Deer Leap's praise had to be earned. It's a little scrawny, she confessed after she had dropped the bird on the ground. Never mind. Any piece of prey is welcome in weather like this. The ground was too hard to dig a hole and bury the fresh kill while they kept hunting, so Yellow Paw scraped leaves over it before starting to search the area for more prey, moving in widening circles around the ash tree. But it seemed as if nothing else was moving in all the frozen forest. Claws of frost dug deep into Yellow Paw's pelt, and she was almost ready to ask if they could go back to camp when she spotted a flicker of movement between two stones. Swiftly, she flashed out a paw and was startled to find that she had hooked a lizard on her claws. It wriggled for a heartbeat and then was still. That was lucky, Deer Leap commented. You don't usually see those in weather as cold as this. Yellow Paw swelled with pride as she carried her two pieces of prey into the camp. Nutpaw and Rowanpaw were standing by the fresh kill pile with their mentors. We've been on a hunting patrol, Nutpaw mewed, scampering up to Yellowpaw. I caught a mouse. And Rowanpaw caught a starling, Finchflight added. They've both done very well. Well, there's no point in standing around watching our fur grow, Deer Leap meowed. What about giving the apprentices a joint training session? They could all do with practicing their battle moves. She never stops, does she? Rowan Paul muttered into Yellow Paw's ear as the other two mentors murmured agreement and led the way to the thorn tunnel. At least fighting will keep us warm, Yellow Paw pointed out. She and her littermates followed their mentors to the shallow training scoop not far from the camp. Ragged Paw and Scorch Paw were already there with Brackenfoot and Crowtail. What's this? Crowtail mewed. They're getting really good. 
The two older apprentices were circling cautiously around each other. Ragged Paul flashed out a paw, but Scorch Paul leaped backward, and the blow never connected. With a yowl, Ragged Paul pushed off with his hind legs and thrust himself into the air. Yellow Paul winced, expecting him to land on Scorch Paw and knock him to the ground, but while Ragged Paw was still in the air, Scorch Paw twisted onto his back. He splayed out all four legs, claws extended. Ragged Paw landed on Scorch Paw's belly, and immediately Scorch Paw fastened his four sets of claws in Ragged Paw's shoulders and haunches. Then he rolled over, pinning Ragged Paw to the ground. Enough, Crowtail meowed, and the two apprentices broke apart. Now try it again, and Scorchpaw, you leap this time. That's a brilliant move, Rowan Paw exclaimed. It's a good one to remember if a cat leaps on you in battle, Brackenfoot explained as the older apprentices circled each other again. Often the cat who's underneath has the worst of the fight, but this way you can get back in control. Can we try? Yellowpaw asked when she had seen the move demonstrated for the second time. Of course, Dearly meowed. That's what we're here for. Yellow Paw, you can work with Nut Paw. Scorch Paw, you practice with Rowan Paw. Rowan Paw looked slightly disconcerted at the thought of working with an apprentice who already knew the move, and Scorch Paw was obviously not too happy about being paired with a younger cat. But they knew better than to argue. Keep your claws sheathed, Brackenfoot instructed. We don't want any shredded fur. Each pair of cats began circling. Yellow Paw was leaping down onto Nut Paw, who had his paws extended, ready for her, when she heard a startled yowl from Rowan Paw. At the same time, a sharp pain sliced through her shoulder. She let out a screech and crumpled to the ground at Nut Paw's paws. For Star Clan's sake, what's happening? Finchflight exclaimed, bounding over to his apprentice. Rowan Paw, are you okay? As Yellow Paw rolled over, gasping with pain, she saw her sister sprawled on the ground on the far side of the training area. Blood was welling slowly from punctures in Rowan Paw's shoulder. Scorch Paw, we said sheathed claws, Crowtail snapped. Sorry, Scorch Paw muttered. I forgot. I don't understand how two apprentices could be injured at the same time, Amberleaf meowed, padding up to Nut Paw. What did you do? Nothing, Nut Paw's eyes were wide with dismay. I never touched Yellow Paw, honestly. Whatever, it still hurts, Yellowpaw snapped, scrambling awkwardly to her paws. I'm okay, Rowanpaw sat up, turning her head to swipe her tongue over the spots of blood on her shoulder. I want to try again. Okay, Finchflight meowed, but let's all be more careful this time. The pain in Yellowpaw's shoulder was fading, but she was wary of being hurt for a second time. When they practiced the move again, she knew she wasn't giving it her best effort. Grab your opponent harder, Deerleap advised. Don't think about what his paws are doing. Just concentrate on hanging on to him and pinning him down. I think that's enough for today, Finchflight decided, when the apprentices had practiced the move once more. Rowan Paw, you'd better see Sage Whisker about those scratches. Rowan Paw nodded, though Yellow Paw noticed that the claw marks weren't bleeding anymore and her sister hardly limped at all as they headed back toward camp. While Rowan Paul padded off to the medicine cat's den, the rest of the apprentices and their mentors gathered around the fresh kill pile. Yellow Paul, do you think you should see Sage Whisker too? Dearly prompted. No, I'm fine. Yellow Paul mumbled through a mouthful of the squirrels she was sharing with Nut Paul. Dearly looked doubtful. You'd better take the rest of the day off, she mewed giving Yellow Paw's shoulder a sniff. I can't see any injury, but you never know. Get some rest and see Sage Whisker if the pain doesn't clear up. She turned away to choose some prey for herself. Yellow Paw didn't want to rest. I feel okay now, she thought. Maybe I just landed badly. When she had finished her share of the squirrel, she decided she would go off by herself to practice the new move. She still wasn't used to being able to leave the camp on her own, and she felt a thrill of confidence as she strode out through the thorns. When she had found a secluded spot in a hollow screened by holly bushes, she tried the move again. First the leap, and then rolling over to splay out her paws, ready to grab her opponent. It doesn't work so well with only one, she thought, disappointed. Do you want any help? The voice startled Yellowpaw. 
She looked up to see Ragged Paw standing at the top of the hollow. No, I'm fine, she mewed, scuffling her forepaws in the earth. Ignoring her refusal, Ragged Paw padded down to join her. You really need a partner to do that move, he meowed. Yellow Paw gave her fur a shake. I'd be mouse-brained not to let him help me. Okay, she agreed. Won't dearly be surprised when she sees I can do the move perfectly. Ragged Paw gave her a brisk nod. I'll leap and you grab, he told her. That way, you get to practice the difficult part. At first, Yellow Paw was afraid that she was going to be squashed into the forest floor by the heavier apprentice. I can't get my paws in place fast enough, she complained, sitting up and shaking scraps of dead leaf off her fur. You have to watch me more closely, Ragged Paw replied. You should know when the leap is coming and be ready. Try again. This time, Yellow Paw spotted the tensing of Ragged Paw's muscles before he leaped. She rolled onto her back and spread her paws wide. Got you, she yelled as she wrapped her paws around him and flipped him over. Ragged Paw scrambled to his paws and gave her a cool nod. Better. Better, Yellow Paw thought indignantly. It was brilliant. You'll be able to do it next time you're in a training session. Ragged Paul went on. Now I've got to go. I want to hunt before it gets dark. Thank you, Yellow Paul called after him as he climbed back out of the hollow. You really helped. Ragged Paul didn't respond. Yellow Paul stood blinking after him, surprised by her feelings of gratitude. Maybe he's not so bad after all. Chapter Six. The early morning sunlight sparkled on the dewy grass and on the cobwebs draped across bushes and clumps of bracken. Yellow Paw paused to taste the air. The scent of damp earth flooded her jaws with a trace of fresh green growth. New Leaf will be here soon. Yellow Paw and her littermates were following Deer Leap on their way out of camp for a training session. As she leaped over a broken branch, she spotted a hint of green. She turned back, pushing the branch aside, and discovered a few delicate shoots poking up through the covering of rotting leaves. Very gently, Yellow Paw scraped away the debris, giving the shoots a chance to reach the sun. Bending down to give them a good sniff, she thought, I'm sure I've smelt this in Sage Whiskers' den before. It must be an herb. As she straightened up, she heard yowls of excitement and the two newest apprentices, Foxpaw and Wolfpaw, hurled themselves over the branch. Yellowpaw leaped backward to avoid being knocked over. Two sets of flying paws stomped down hard on the tiny shoots, crushing them into the earth. Mouse brains? Yellowpaw called after them, her fur bristling in fury. Watch where you're going! Brightflower, Foxpaw's mentor, and Blizzardwing, who was mentoring Wolfpaw, followed their apprentices more slowly. Brightflower gave Yellowpaw an inquiring look as she passed, but Yellowpaw just shrugged and brought up the rear. The rest of the apprentices and their mentors had gathered in a clearing not far from the marshes. Wolfpaw and Foxpaw were charging around the edge, shouldering aside Nutpaw and Rowanpaw if they happened to get in the way. Rowanpaw padded over to Yellowpaw. They're even more annoying than Ragged Paw and Scorch Paw. Still angry over the damaged shoots, Yellow Paw nodded. They're acting like kits. Deer Leap called the cats together. Today we're going to do a hunting exercise, she announced. Oh, do we have to? Wolf Paw interrupted. That's so boring. I want to fight. Deer Leap gave him a freezing glare. If you like, Wolf Paw, you can go back to camp and search the elders for ticks. Uh, no. Wolfpaw's tail drooped. I guess hunting is okay. Thank you so much, Deerleap went on, an edge of sarcasm in her tone. This morning you're going to work in pairs. Nutpaw and Rowanpaw, you can work together. Yellowpaw, you go with Foxpaw. Her tail tip twitched. Wolfpaw, seeing as there isn't another apprentice to partner with, you'll have to work with me. Yellowpaw was torn between enjoying Wolfpaw's appalled expression and dismay that she had to work with Foxpaw. She glanced at the younger apprentice and saw that Foxpaw was giving her a dubious glance in reply. Okay, you don't like this any more than I do, Yellowpaw thought. But we have to put up with it for the sake of the clan. 
Deer Leap directed Yellow Paw and Fox Paw to head through the marshes and toward the Thunderpath. Come back here when you've each caught one piece of prey, she directed. And remember, you're working together. Yellow Paw padded carefully across the swampy ground, practicing her mentor's instructions to look, listen, and scent. Meanwhile, Foxpaw leaped from grassy clump to grassy clump, often landing instead in the shallow pools and splashing muddy water over her bright ginger pelt. Yellow Paw rolled her eyes. I suppose it's one way of disguising your scent from the prey. She could hear the distant roar of the thunderpath when Foxpaw gave an excited little bounce. I can smell a pigeon! This way! She dashed off. She won't catch a pigeon or anything else racing about like that, Yellow Paw muttered. She had picked up the pigeon scent at the same moment, but she had also scented something else. Cats, and not Shadow Clan cats. She mewed softly as she followed Foxpaw. This could mean trouble. She caught up to Foxpaw within sight of the Thunderpath. The young ginger she-cat was standing in the middle of a puddle of feathers, gazing down at them with a look of dismay. Some other cat got here before us, she told Yellow Paw. I can see that. The scent of strange cats was stronger than ever. And not a shadow clan patrol. How do you know? Foxpaw asked. Yellow Paw ignored the question. If she can't smell that... She cast around the pool of feathers, her nose to the ground, until she spotted Catpaw prints leading away in the direction of the Thunderpath. Look at this, she meowed, beckoning Foxpaw with her tail. See how small and light those paw prints are? She pointed out when Foxpaw reached her side. I'll bet a moon of dawn patrols that they were made by Wind Clan cats. Wind Clan! Foxpaw exclaimed. Stealing our prey! They can't do that! Let's get them. She was ready to charge off, but Yellow Paw stood in front of her. Wait, she snapped. Are you mouse-brained? Are you scared? Foxpaw retorted. Never. Yellow Paw's voice was low and furious. I just have some sense, that's all. What do you suppose two apprentices are going to do, alone on Wind Clan territory? What we have to do is go and find our mentors. She raced back across the marsh. Foxpaw pelted alongside her, looking mutinous. When they reached the training area, only Brightflower and Blizzardwing were there. Wind Clan! Yellowpaw gasped. Stealing our prey! Foxpaw added, bouncing on her paws. Are we going to attack? Hold on! Brightflower raised her tail. Settle down and tell us what happened. Yellowpaw began to explain what they had seen, trying to ignore Foxpaw's attempts to interrupt. While she was speaking, Deerleap and Wolfpaw returned, closely followed by Nutpaw and Rowanpaw. We can't let this pass, Brightflower meowed when Yellowpaw had finished. We need to take a look. Yellowpaw, lead the way. Yellowpaw was proud to pad at the head of the patrol as she took them through the marshes to where the pigeon feathers lay. Brightflower dipped her head to sniff at the cat paw prints. Fresh, she murmured, and definitely Wind Clan. Two of them, I'd guess. Well-scented, Yellow Paw. You have the best sense of smell, dearly meowed to Brightflower. Why don't you follow these tracks and see where they lead? Take Blizzardwing with you in case the Wind Clan cats are still lurking around. We'll wait for you here. Brightflower nodded and headed toward the Thunderpath, with Blizzardwing hard on her paws. Yellow Paw waited impatiently until she saw both warriors racing back. The paw prints lead to that new tunnel the two legs made under the Thunderpath, Blizzardwing reported. And we know where that leads, Wind Clan territory. What are we going to do? Rowan Paw demanded. Brightflower and Blizzardwing both looked at Deerleap as senior warrior. She thought for a moment. Blizzardwing, you should go back to camp and fetch reinforcements, she replied at last. Foxpaw and Wolfpaw, go with him and stay in the camp. What? Wolfpaw exclaimed, dismayed. We want to fight! Yeah, we know some awesome moves! Foxpaw added. Certainly not, Deerleap meowed. You're both too young for battle. Turning to Yellowpaw and her littermates, she added, Do you feel ready for your first attack on an enemy? Yellowpaw's belly flipped over. Yes, she choked out. Her littermates' eyes were wide with shock. They glanced at each other, then nodded. Not fair! Wolfpaw muttered. We can fight as well as them. 
Deer Leap ignored his comment. We'll wait for you near the tunnel entrance, she told Blizzard Wing. The white tom rounded up the younger apprentices and set off back to camp. When they had gone, Deer Leap led the way along the line of the tracks until they came in sight of the narrow tunnel that led to Wind Clan. Yellow Paul could smell the Wind Clan scent even more strongly here. We'll stop here, Deer Leap announced, halting beside a clump of long, marshy grass. Settle down so you can't be seen. And if any Wind Clan cats come out of the tunnel, don't even twitch a whisker until I give the word. Yellow Paw obeyed, crouching down in the grass between Rowan Paw and Nut Paw. Her claws were extended and her muscles tensed to leap on any trespassers. But no cats had appeared by the time that Yellow Paw picked up a stronger Shadow Clan scent and heard an approaching patrol brushing through the grass. Deer Leap rose to meet them, signaling to the apprentices to do the same. Stone Tooth, the clan deputy, was in the lead, with Brackenfoot and Crowtail close behind. Yellow Paw was surprised and a bit disappointed to see that Ragged Paw and Scorched Paw were with their mentors. She'd wanted herself and her littermates to be the only apprentices to face down Wind Clan this time. Where's Blizzard Wing? Deer Leap asked. He stayed to help guard the camp, Stone Tooth meowed, just in case Wind Clan thinks it can bring the battle to us. Deer Leap sniffed. I'd like to see them try. Excitement bubbled up inside Yellowpaw as the patrol prepared to leave. We'll make Wind Clan sorry they ever touched our prey. Calm down, Ragged Paw mewed. This is what warriors do. Yeah, Scorch Paw added. It's just part of living in a clan. It's your first time in battle, too, Nutpaw snorted. So don't pretend you're not excited. Yellowpaw could see that her littermate was right. Scorch Paw was working his claws in the grass, and Ragged Paw's amber eyes gleamed. Stone Tooth gathered the patrol with a wave of his tail. I'll lead, he announced. Brackenfoot, you bring up the rear, and keep an eye out for trouble behind. The pale ginger Tom nodded. Turning to the apprentices, Stone Tooth went on. Listen to everything I say. We won't attack right away. We'll give Wind Clan a chance to explain themselves first. Like they'll be able to explain Wind Clan scent and pigeon feathers inside our borders, Deer Leap snarled. The patrol set off in single file. Yellow Paw was close to the rear, just ahead of Ragged Paw and her father. The tunnel under the Thunderpath was narrower than she had realized, much smaller than the one Deer Leap had shown her on their first tour of the territory, and dark. Yellow Paw jumped, her heart beginning to pound, at a roaring noise that seemed to fill the whole of it. It's okay, Brackenfoot meowed from behind her. It's only monsters going past on the Thunderpath. Forcing herself to relax, Yellowpaw followed the scent of Crowtail, who was walking in front of her. I wonder what would happen if we met Wind Clan cats coming the other way. She tried to work out how she could use her battle moves in such a tight space. Soon she could scent fresh air coming from somewhere ahead. A few heartbeats later, Crowtail scrambled upward, showering scraps of earth and debris down on Yellowpaw. Blinking, Yellowpaw followed and broke out into the open. As Ragged Paw and Brackenfoot emerged after her, she took a huge breath and looked around. I'm on Wind Clan territory now. Yellowpaw felt as if every hair on her pelt was standing on end with the thrill of being across enemy borders. Behind her, monsters roared up and down the Thunderpath. In front, a wide stretch of grass swelled to the horizon in an unbroken sweep. Wind blew from the hilltop toward the Shadow Clan cats, ruffling their fur and bringing with it the scents of cats and rabbits. Stone Tooth waved his tail. This way. Stay together. I'm surprised the Wind Clan cats can catch anything in these open spaces. Yellow Paw mewed to Nutpaw as they followed the clan deputy toward the top of the moor. I know, Nutpaw agreed. I can hardly hear myself speak, with the wind in my ear fur. Look, Rowan Paul flicked her tail over Yellow Paw's shoulder. Gazing upward, Yellow Paw spotted a scrawny Wind Clan warrior outlined against the sky. The cat stood motionless for a heartbeat, then turned tail and vanished down the other side of the hill. Gone to warn his clanmates, Nut Paul muttered. I still can't believe how skinny they are. Yellowpaw mewed, and their smell is weird, like rabbits and wind-blown grass. She remembered the first time she had seen Wind Clan cats, at her first gathering almost a moon ago. But the memory was blurred, 
There were so many cats, so much noise. She had looked forward to her first gathering for as long as she could remember, but it had been overwhelming, busy and full of chatter and conflicting scents. Yellowpaw had felt too timid to go and talk to any cats from the rival clan, instead staying among the Shadow Clan apprentices. Afterward, she had felt stupid and embarrassed for being so shy, but Deer Leap told her lots of apprentices felt that way, and sometimes even senior warriors. The next gathering would be easier, she promised. Now Yellowpaw felt strong and confident as she strode out across the moor. I'm part of a Shadow Clan patrol. I'm going to fight for my clan. When the Shadow Clan cats reached the brow of the hill, they spotted a patrol of Wind Clan cats heading across the moor toward them. Stone Tooth halted, signaling with his tail for the rest to do the same. We'll let them come to us, he meowed. Leading the Wind Clan patrol was a light brown tabby Tom. Yellowpaw remembered Deer Leap pointing him out to her at the gathering. He was Reed Feather, the Wind Clan deputy. Stone Tooth stepped forward to face Reed Feather as the Wind Clan cats approached. What are you doing on our territory? Reed Feather demanded. Don't you know? Stone Tooth challenged. We found pigeon feathers on our side of the Thunderpath with Wind Clan scent and paw marks. You've been stealing our prey. We've done nothing of the sort, Reed Feather retorted. We chased that pigeon from our own territory, and that makes it Wind Clan prey. That's not true, and you know it, Stone Tooth growled, sliding out his claws. Reed Feather tensed his muscles, his neck fur bristling. Yellowpaw could smell his fear. The Wind Clan patrol was smaller, and the cats looked too weak and skinny to fight well. For a moment, Yellowpaw felt a pang of sympathy. These cats look as if they haven't had a good meal in moons. Maybe they deserved that pigeon. Then she gave herself a shake. That's mouse-brained. I'm a Shadow Clan warrior, or I will be soon, and these are my enemies. You need to leave, Reed Feather hissed. You're not welcome on our territory. We're not going anywhere until you've been taught a lesson, Stone Tooth responded. Yellowpaw saw Reed Feather's gaze flicker. All right, he mewed wearily. You've made your point. We'll stay on our own side of the border from now on. Stone Tooth didn't reply with words. Instead, he leaped onto the Wind Clan deputy, bearing him to the ground. A heartbeat later, fighting exploded all around Yellowpaw. For a moment, she stood frozen. The whole world seemed to be filled with screeching, clawing cats, and she didn't know which paw to use first. Then she pulled herself together and lunged at a Wind Clan cat who was on top of Nutpaw, pummeling him with strong paws. The Wind Clan cat lashed out at her with a wild blow that only riffled her whiskers, then scrambled away. Thanks, Nutpaw gasped. Yellowpaw whirled around as she felt a burning scratch all down one side, but she couldn't spot the cat who had dealt the blow. Instead, a huge dark tabby tom bore down on her, his amber eyes blazing. Yellowpaw gulped. She had thought of these cats as small and skinny, but they were full grown, and this one was much bigger than she was. Frantically, she tried to remember her battle moves. She darted at the Wind Clan Tom, intending to strike a blow and spring back out of range, but the Tom was ready for her. He ducked away from her claws and swiped her so hard over the ear with one forepaw that she staggered and for a heartbeat, the sky went dark. She lashed out again, remembering the move that Ragged Paw had helped her practice, but as she tried to twist in the air, the Tom batted her down so that she landed all wrong. He's too strong, Yellowpaw thought despairingly as she struggled to her paws again. Out of the way, a voice sounded in Yellowpaw's ear, and a paw scooped her to one side. With a gasp of shock, she saw Ragged Paw flash past her and hurl himself onto the big tom. Ragged Paw's claws dug into the Wind Clan warrior's shoulders, and blood started to well up. With a yowl of pain, the tom flung Ragged Paw off and fled. Ragged Paw sprang to his paws, ignoring Yellowpaw, then dashed into a fight between Scorch Paw and Reed Feather. Yellowpaw stayed where she was, panting. Ragged-paw thought he had to rescue me, she thought indignantly, but she couldn't help admiring his courage and his fighting skill. As she rose to her paws again, she winced with pain. It felt as if every scrap of her pelt had been ripped off, but when she checked her fur and flexed each paw in turn, she couldn't find any wounds except for the scratch along her side. Glancing around to find another opponent, Yellowpaw realized that the fight was all but over. 
Most of the wind clan cats were pelting across the moor. Reedfeather was the last to break away and race after his clanmates, with Rowan Paw hard on his paws. No, Stone Tooth commanded. Rowan Paw, come back! As Yellow Paw's sister returned, growling angrily, the clan deputy continued. There is no need to pursue a defeated enemy. Yellow Paw thought she could discern sympathy in the deputy's voice and his eyes as he gazed after the vanishing wind clan patrol. But he did not admit as much out loud. Instead, he raised his tail. Back to our territory, he ordered. There's nothing more to do here. As they headed back down the hill toward the tunnel, the apprentices bunched together. Did you see me scratch that black she-cat's nose? Not Paw puffed. She ran like a rabbit. I did the latest move Finch Flight taught me, Rowan Paw put in. The Wind Clan cat looked so surprised. Yellow Paw couldn't join in their chattering. With every heartbeat, she was growing more annoyed that Ragged Paw had flung her aside in the battle. None of the other apprentices had to be rescued. Does he think I can't fight? The rest of Shadow Clan greeted the returning patrol with yowls of welcome. Thank you all, Cedar Star meowed, meeting them in the center of the camp. You have shown our enemies that we in Shadow Clan have teeth and claws to defend what is ours. Tonight we will hold a feast in your honor. Extra hunting patrols went out, and as the sun set, the whole clan gathered in the clearing to eat. Yellowpaw felt proud and a bit embarrassed when she and the rest of the patrol were allowed to choose the best pieces of fresh kill before any of the other warriors. I can't believe we got to go on a real mission, she whispered to Nutpaw as she settled down with the plump starling. I wish I'd been there, Toad skipped me out, digging his claws into the floor of the camp. But I was out on a hunting patrol. I have the worst luck. There'll be other chances. Hollyflower told him with a twitch of her whiskers. Wind Clan isn't going to go away. And Shadow Clan will be ready for them, Archie added. A shiver of delight went through Yellowpaw as she listened to the senior warriors. I'm glad I belong to such a strong clan. When the clan was full fed and lay drowsily sharing tongues, Stone Tooth rose to his paws and told the story of the battle against Wind Clan so that every cat could hear. Wind Clan won't bother us again for a very long time, he finished. And part of that is thanks to the five apprentices who were with us. Our clan should be proud of them. Those are wise words, Cedar Star responded, rising to stand beside his deputy. And from what you tell me, there is already a new warrior among us. Ragged Paw, come here. The dark tabby Tom sprang up from his place beside Scorch Paw. For a moment he hesitated, glancing around wildly. Then he padded forward to stand in front of his leader. Murmurs of surprise rose from the rest of the clan. The clan was silent again as Cedar Star raised his tail and began to address them. I, Cedar Star, leader of Shadow Clan, call upon my warrior ancestors to look down on this apprentice, he meowed. He has trained hard to understand the ways of your noble code, and he has proven in battle that he is worthy to become a warrior. Ragged Paw, do you promise to uphold the warrior code and to protect and defend your clan, even at the cost of your life? Ragged Paw's voice rang out clear and confident. I do! Then by the power of Star Clan, I give you your warrior name, Cedar Star went on. Ragged Paw! From this time on, you shall be known as Ragged Pelt. Star Clan honors your courage and your skill in battle. He bent his head to rest his muzzle on Ragged Pelt's head, and Ragged Pelt licked his shoulder in response. Ragged Pelt! Ragged Pelt! Ragged Pelt! The clan yowled, their eyes gleaming in the gathering darkness. Yellow Paw joined in somewhat reluctantly. I still feel bruised all over from being thrown out of the way as if I was a troublesome kit. She noticed Scorchpaw looking furious that he hadn't been made a warrior along with his brother and felt a stab of sympathy. It must be tough falling behind your littermate. As the yowls died away, Yellowpaw was surprised to see Ragged Pelt padding across the clearing toward her. He halted in front of her and dipped his head. Yellowpaw? I'm sorry I pushed you aside in the battle, he mewed. It's not that I think you can't fight, but that wind clan cat was too strong for you. Yellowpaw opened her jaws for a stinging retort, then stopped herself. 
Remembering the huge wind clan Tom, she had to admit he was right. I'd be licking my wounds in Sage Whiskers' den right now, if it wasn't for Ragged Pelt. It's okay, she muttered. Ragged Pelt let out a brief purr. I'm looking forward to joining you on patrols when you're a warrior, he told her, then dipped his head again and padded off to join the other warriors. Rowan Paul leaned closer to Yellow Paul, a glint of amusement in her eyes. Ragged Pelt likes you, she teased. Don't talk nonsense, Yellow Paul retorted. He's just a clanmate, that's all. But as she watched Ragged Pelt join Brackenfoot and Featherstorm outside the warrior's den, Yellow Paul felt a warm glow spreading through her from ears to tail tip. Ragged Pelt came looking for me. Maybe he doesn't think I'm a troublesome kit anymore.